here? I personally think it's kind of 50 50 because it's based on two conditions for Sunspark and one condition for Kodak. I think Kodak is very clear line the gameplay. See, you can fight, you can kind of, you know, be engaged into the fight. They're not looking to force anything out unless it's a catch. And in most cases, we see the high loss not really being able to, like, it's not, it's not a Kaja. It can't just, like, hey, you are going to die. It doesn't get to pick and choose. And Kaja, on the other hand, needs to land on some big, big target. Knock down the Leo maybe. That's one point of contestion on the top side of the map. They could look for the Chang'e for sure. I don't think she's going to be in range to get major, but I think Chang'e is something that they need to be very, very aware of because her range is just so, so long. She walks up, if she gets chucked out by the meteor shower, it's not going to be a good time for them. So I think Sun's part, they, they kind of have to look for many different angles to deal with Kodak right now. And again, whoever gets that early mid game lead is going to have like net themselves to maybe three times. Yeah, perhaps so. And I'm really looking at how Sun's Park approached this is to bully off that little more in the early game. Now, speaking of that, we're heading in towards our very first game of day three, Sun's Park versus Toe Doctor. Of course, Sun's Park on the blue side versus Toe Doctor on the red. Now, we've already talked about a lot of all these picks. Now, let's get towards that last pick because from what I remember, we're seeing a lot of great uh, work from all these players that picked up the Lunox. But wow, what do we have inside of the river here? It's Nenas and Chiku already soaking a little bit more damage compared from those versus as well as JP. But we are not letting them getting anywhere close to Proxy the way. This is such a bad trade because overall, like Chiku, he got chucked out really hard, forcing out the rejuvenate from the Nas to kind of keep him at a healthy amount. They're gonna get the cooldowns. Uh, they're gonna get the cooldown, which of course is always great, but again, like if you want to go for something aggressive, you need your mid lane, and turn on, they understand like, yeah, we've got a strong early game, let's use our mid rotation to kind of steal away your buffs. Yeah, I can see great uh, aggressive plays coming from Soda, okay. and Flicker has been uh, taken off off the side of Lever Ecclesia, and the ability, look at it, how efficient, they just went in for the raids, and Todak now will be able to secure that river crab, while on top side, they're about to do the same when they broke. That's part of the movie. Yeah, I personally think that they should contest topside for sure, but uh, again, I think they want to focus all their energy towards the bottom side. Oh no, the one's in trouble here. X ray instantly goes down. He disrespects trying to use the momentum to try and gain some sort of advantage. He gets punished instead. Vizio gets a good chunk of power of nature here. Guardian's Baron is popped, but let's look at that replay one more time. Because as we can see here, he definitely disrespected, walks up too far, and then he already had at least half of that gauge, passive gauge from X-Ray. The moment the true damage starts kicking in, he was basically gone. Yeah, and look at how much damage that they just put out in that split second of the time with Kill VJ as well as uh, the Renzio going in. And here comes E1 flickering off the fight, but it will be Renzio going for the chase. And who's again? We'll seal the deal. And that's 2-0 for his out of such mark. Yep, and Todak giving another kill over JP, taking quite a bit of damage, but at least he's able to pull backwards. Wait, hold on, he takes a look at Rondo, that last touch, the crit was able to pick him off. Oh my, and they did not uh, expect that sort of uh, damage output coming from Chiku all too early in the game. Now Molina, of course, a little bit way too late, Mount Boots going to receive a little bit of that tickle as E1 has arrived to the scene. And E1 is just, of course, not trying to overextend while well, Reflusia, once again, right under the tower. What can Reflusia do to keep themselves in? Oh, hold up, look at the rotations, look at the rotations, because Sunspark wants to collapse on the mid lane. Do they notice? Hold up, don't know. Oh. Malaysia goes down, but Chiku might be in trouble here. He has to pull back as the rest of the team pulls up. Glorious Path is already now down, but look at it. Isn't ah. gonna let them escape. Ah. Hurricane Dance right on top of them. Nanas is in trouble. He has no support from the team. But Thora, they're willing to sacrifice two members and hopefully get Turtle off of this. They are rushing it down with the Meteor Shower to net themselves some gold after that heavy loss in the bot lane. What a beautiful Hurricane Dance right from the corners of power and they did not see this one coming. Play the Nas, he's already uh, all taken out of back seat and the Nas could only run the opposite direction and that was definitely a great flank play from the side of Sunspark. Well, Toad Up match to secure that Turtle over the top side and now are looking pretty good for the side of Sunsparks here with about 1k of the goalie. Yeah, and it was a great job by Fukuzum because he managed to get, you know, cut them off. Ooh, oh, oh. good play, JP is in trouble. He's in so one little mark more damage. Oh, oh wow, Judge comes through, clips JP. JP is not having a good time, but Sunsparks, remember, they're still ahead in goal. They're still in it to win it. Wow, they're hammering each other on all so early in the morning. And now, look at
looking at it, it's less than four minutes of the game, and we're already getting seven kills in total while Blue's against just trying to secure this. Well, well, well I'll just take it back. They were close to securing it, but you know, once you see like the rest of the team of Kodak start moving into the jungle, you have to really question how many members are committing. Oh, Meteor Shower here. Ooh, who takes away the buff? Nobody has retribution to steal it away. Wow, I really like how Blue just easily take that one up without even needing to look what's inside of the brush and now X-Ray is in trouble. He's gonna be flanked by all three members again, but here comes Moose again, hit him by the portable. Oh, but X-Ray, X-Ray's gonna be pretty well alive. Great purify here, they're gonna dive the mid lane here as the rest of the team starts pulling through. That's Sonata of forcing out the flicker from JP. He is not going to go down this time round as the rest of the team pulls back up. They don't have a wave. The Felicia finishes off that siege target. The rest of the team of Sun Spark is trying to collapse on them. Koda will not get that side flank this time. I just love how these teams are not even giving each other any risk at all. Every time where they actually get one pick up, the other team will be actually doing some objectives or even trying to force down some towers and now that we're seeing that turtle's falling in towards the river here we're looking at members of the trying to secure it while Sukuz against is trying to chase off E1 well I'm looking at Chodak here who is hiding behind the shadows here uh -huh. just waiting for some spark to strike yeah, yeah they can't start they would like to start it however Leomorn he still has to clear up that top side and I think they just want to stall it here they're just kind of you know waiting it out <laughs> We'll move at any point in time. Bottom lane, next point, just takes quite a bit of damage. Last insanity, pulls it out. Rezio, he's gonna be a okay, but this is not gonna be good for the top side as X-Ray is in a lot of trouble, even with the Phantom lead. It's just too much true damage coming in from Harry. So much bad DPS output coming from Ophelia, and now with Toad out here, having some easy takedown on that turtle with the help of Moon, of course, on that Meteor Tower. Now Rezio's uh -oh. all low, Flicker being popped as well, and somehow he still managed to escape, but not for long. Chica's gonna push them all over, and speaking of pushing them off, it's gonna be Moose again. He wants running for his life, and with that, Sunspark comes out with a total of seven kills for now. Such a good play coming in from Kuzikin here. He uses the thousand pounder, and gets right in the middle. Let's look at the replay here as Resident. He goes down, but look at that. Look at that rejuvenation. It pops out, and Kuzikin is just like, no, I am not letting you abuse that. I'm gonna push you out of the zone. Because that was so beautiful, I can't really uh, explain how they actually reacted so quickly, but look at how Todak is still pretty much equivalent in terms of gold. It's only 400 that sets them apart, and there's already a team of shields as well as Axe for both the export as well as Lolita on your side. And of course, there's the endless battle as well for the great gear, which I'm looking at the great gear now with that three kills. The only member that's really ramping up from the side of Toda. Yeah, but so far the gold is even like both sides are, you know, they're taking, they're being very efficient with their moves. They're trading pretty evenly, even though Sunspark does have a three kill lead. It doesn't mean that Todak hasn't been making moves across the map. The turtles that have added up to the accumulated. Wow. Oh no, he's gonna be locked in here. Who's again waiting the full duration? He's not getting out. The Numenon Blast does come down. They get the first kill on, uh, onto the highlights, and the rest of the team is pulled out. Revelation, he blocks out the entire Meteor Shower, protecting his team. They're gonna be locking E1 down. He oh. flickers right on out of there. He doesn't want to get back in there. Puskin is in a little bit of trouble. Takes a little bit of damage from the crescendo, but it's not going to be enough. I'm loving how Puskin is setting the tempo for every uh -oh. single match. Oh, he, oh, he goes down for the mega kill, and he will fall into the hands of Kill right here. Kill BJ 404. That's no error, by the way. As we see, this turtle definitely going to be snatched here by Sunspark. Yeah, great play coming in from Sunspark. But E1, what you doing there, buddy? Like, you're already low. You've got to respect Repl you Sorry, not Repelation, but you've got to respect K uh, KLBJ. Because he is just absolutely killing it. And he is one of the leading that may just on their side. So, he's got a lot of gold on him. He needs to get that Athena shield sooner rather than later. Well, now, speaking of Athena shield, of course, some of these members already have it, but look at Nenas here. They're getting clipped off once again as Pusikin hits him on the wall with a hurricane dash. He was coming into the rescue as well, but look at the rest of the members of Tuna. They're watching right into the jungle, and Nenas, the first one to fall alongside with the Granger as well. Two down from the Malaysian side, as we see KLBJ chasing over an X ray, and they will not let this one slide. JP goes in for the triple kill, and he's hunting for. Can he go in for it? Of course, it's a little bit way too late to 
turned out, but Sunsparks now getting a huge lead after the team fly. Yeah, let's look at the viewpoint one more time because as you can see, Moon was trying to get some damage and, and actually eliminate Rezio here in the back line and a lot of that damage was wasted for some reason. He, he took so little damage, he was able to kind of kite it out just enough to mitigate the amount from that meteor shower, which is really, really impressive. Well, I gotta say, we're starting off the day here with a huge triple kill on JP. Well, make no mistakes at all. We're seeing Sunspark here, of course, one of the hot favorites from the Philippines. And now, Grassley Sears setting one up against Actrae, all by himself as well. That seat has already been called, but there's no use to call out Farmville when you have three men flanking from the back. And what I love about Sunsparks is they are so efficient on those turn die. Yeah, they really, really are. They hold their abilities until they absolutely have to. And I think that was kind of on X-ray for turning back into the fight when he could have run the opposite direction. But I think he knew he just had to buy a lot of time. Yep, and definitely bought just enough time for himself. And in the us here, they're gonna go in for the catch, and the panda will be taken down. Finally, Buzikin actually goes down, and Mord is gonna be potentially in the hands of Monarch. They might need to take a 50-50, and it looks pretty good because two members from the side of Sunspark is down. It's a 3v5. Well, speaking of this TV5 here, that's gonna be a huge wall charge over onto Kill BJ, but he's gonna go oh. right in towards the Order of Frills, flicker over the wall, and Rezio with the last and seven, right in between, the middle of the glass as well. Oh my goodness, they're turning it around, and Rafusia will be the next one to drop, and now then Chang is gonna go on the killing screen, and Kill BJ gotta bow out on this one, and Toad out now has absolute control on the Lord. I mean, Kill, how is Kill still alive after everything that just happened? I mean, hold on, they should be able to secure this, but looking at this replay, like, E1 was right on top of him. Kill, at the very last second, was able to get that harmony, as well as the brilliance, and he manages to survive, flickering over the wall when everything was looking so, so bleak. Human Blast was a great effort, but again, look at that rejuvenation, perfectly put on top of the rest of the team members. He just pow I lost his powers through all that damage. Yeah, and I really gotta give credit to all these members of Toadout because their position was so magnificent. All the frontliners were doing their duty, and none of these members of Sunsparks have managed to reach the back line in that sort of sense as they were pushed back into the jungle. And, well, for Kill VJ, he seems like he's pretty much untouchable for the time being. Pretty much, and I think they need a little bit more time to kind of scale. Golden Staff already being purchased by JP. Uh, they kind of need to contest Lord at this point in time. I mean, Todak just want a really Good fight, but a lot of their members are getting chucked out in our lead column as well. With us, wow! Right. First uh, for Nenas, uh, he's definitely gotta be uh, getting himself ready to get himself in towards the Lord Pit, which right now the Hylos is marching right into it. But look at Renzo here; he's already got that immortality. It goes to Blue Lincoln, so they can dive in whenever they are ready. So Sunsparks here, they are calling the shots. They're trying to bake them with this Lord Call, but members of Toad out there reacting and responding with a little bit of split by them themselves looking at the bot lane. Yep, and Rezio, he doesn't have his full armor yet. This allows X-Ray to actually get some damage onto that target. He might be, uh, he should be able to take this. And yes, he pulls back away. Toad out played that really, really well, using E1 as the living boy, getting the information of playing around it. Now, E1, of course, uh, being the uh, from liner, like you said, and he's just going to buy enough time in. I just love how Toda just negate that pressure by just playing up on towards two of these lanes. And of course, Peter Chow will be utilized here. We'll just be uh, shredding some, a uh, little bit of the help coming from Kuzo Ken. But both sides, they really know that if they were to commit, they want it to become a full swing of a win for either side. Exactly. And I think Toda, they just have to keep playing this game. They just have to keep sitting on Rezio getting yeah. chucked down. He doesn't get the last insanity, but the Viraga armor breaks. Chief was like, nah. Don't want to push any further. Don't want to force anything out just yet. We're waiting for Sunspark to make a mistake. And Tordok is waiting with a ship in hand. Waiting for the killing oh. blow. They get the initial kill. They punish him. Rezio is going to be going down. Immortality is popped, but he flickers on out too. He survives. How on earth did he survive that? He flickers off in time as well. And he was just by the end. It almost flipped him. But Tordok, they were doubling down on the bomb side. They still get the tower instead. Yeah, I mean, Tordok is playing this macro so well. Sunspark is in a position where 
They can't force anything unless they have position. And Koda, they understand that they see as long as uh, Fusika, La Fusika doesn't get a good Hurricane Dance and Rezio is chunked out, they can play the map and they're doing a really good job at playing the map. I certainly must say that they are so great in that macro play and I can't help but to agree with every word you say. Now, Fusika already at the forefront trying to deal with E1, but you know, tanks versus tanks, not really the ideal situation. Yeah, also waiting on the back as well. Kulita could possibly channel a great Numenon Blast if the effort comes right in towards the middle of all once again. Now, look at JP uh, though. I mean, JP's gonna get shut down, but I think E1 should be okay here. I don't think JP is, uh, you know, absolutely unstoppable just yet. Chunkta is right behind her, so they don't have to worry. But, you know, on the bot side, bottom side of the map, they're like trying to make sure they keep control over the waves. And as long as Kodak keep playing this rotational game, I think they might be able to get out of this. The Nas takes a little bit of damage, but he's not the priority target. Yeah, and speaking of which, so you can see, Gold has already been evened up by the side of Soda. And there was not really that sort of a gap in between, other than the mid game itself. Now, look at Chico as well as uh, these members of Soda. They are on the back front. And uh, Fusikin, Fusikin, trying to run for his life. Rezio going for more last attack. Pops Leo right in front of the members of Soda. And once again, they get getting caught out. And Ekro will be the first one to fall. Actually, gone to hunt. That's going to nail them to the wall. And JP gets himself safe. But he was trying to haul them all the back. And now it's time for the Lord. And Chico's already taking it down. Yeah, they called them off. Soda is just like, retreat, boys. We don't need to keep on going for it. Let's look at that replay one more time. And honestly, I have to commend Fusikin there. That was almost an insanely good play. If he was able to get that hurricane, that's just a little bit earlier, but they just did not let him. The purifies were there and they were ready. And this is when the mistake happens because Sunspark is fighting in the playground, in the battlefield of Kodak, where they are stuck in one line. The moment they are in one line, not a lot of, uh, you know, broad, broad corners to kind of dodge away from the, uh, uh, from the ultimate, from Moon, they are just in a straight firing line. Yeah, that's definitely one thing that they really got to watch out for. And none of these members from the side of Sun Sparks have been able to reach anywhere close to Moon either. So fighting inside the jungle, definitely not the ideal situation for Sun Sparks. But look at them go. They're going to go in for another catch. And they yeah, might just be so able to get that kill over on the Nunes. But here comes X-Ray now. X-Ray as well, being chunked down low. Oh, my oh God. no, there comes the Nunes last. And double kill headed towards the side of JP as well. And SSA, that's enough for a day as they have to stop the Lord from marching towards the bottom side, which means Toda is trying to clear up mid lane and open things up by taking out tower, but there's not enough time for them to even get anywhere close. Refalacia single-handedly won Sunspark that fight and netted them, stopped that Lord push, all because he put up his shield at the right time, that Guardian Bull. Uh, that Guardian's Bulwark, just so, so good, blocks the entire crescendo, blocks the entire Meteor Shower, no damage from the back line, he just took it like a champ. Oh, yes indeed, and look at Toda here, of course, now they're having that goal, all swinging in their favor, of course, by this uh, moment here, seven minutes of play, they should be able to complete the items, and look at X-Ray, he's really not that sort of a player that's all about that KDA, although he's zero with five, still having quite a little bit of that impact where he's in charge of pulling members of Sunsparks all across, just distracting them, trying to bait and switch, trying to secure all that sort of macro play that they've been pulling up for the entirety of this matchup. Oh, Rezio's in trouble, last Saturday over the wall, trying to hop on over into safety, oh. but he might be in trouble because Chico is not going to let him get away. The crescendo comes through, but Rezio's one hit away. The immortality is popped, Glorious pathway is put down, they might need to use the rejuvenation. He wanted to take a lot of damage, but again, rejuvenation is put already up, but Fuskin is not going to let them play the game. Flicker coming in from E1, well played, but he still goes down the passive from Terry, takes him at the very end. Ooh, golden staff, beautiful item. Look at how chaotic that sort of team fight was, and it's only one casualty. And they are playing with such clinical finishes that they are not trying to make any sort of mistakes at all. But E1, of course, was soaking most of that chunk of damage, and we all know E1 as one of the best tanks hailing from Malaysia. And now he's already 0 3 5, but every single time he kills it, he wants to make sure that he gets a one sort of takedown. But now we're seeing Sunsparks here trying to open up the mid lane and look this up at the front line defense. There's still that immortality, so there's no reason for Todak to actually expend their utilities on that whole leader. Exactly. And I think this is already just a great matchup. I think Sunspark honestly should have been the favorites coming in, especially against Todak here, because again, we haven't seen Todak go out of that, you know, the comfort zone into the international scene, and I think they're doing a great job against.
against Sunspark, who honestly have been playing a really tough game and a really tough composition that requires a lot of mechanical skills. So a lot of commendation going over to Sunspark, especially Fu's against. It's really dependent on their tanks right now. Like Sunspark is solely dependent on their tanks to set up the fight. And not only the tanks, the carries have to do anything. Well, of course, we get a carry. We're seeing JP here with seven kills already. And for kill, he's been performing since the start of the game. So I mean, these are the two guys they, they really have to catch up. Yeah, that real that is so so true. Oh, that's not actually being popped too. Oh, they get the catch! Oh. Immortality being popped on the push again. He can use the thousand powder and he's gonna be safe, but they finally break that immortality. They have to wait for their cooldowns, hold their ground, clear the waves, and maybe look for a fight. But again, Sunspark, they know they're like, alright, alright, let's pull back a little bit, take our time with this. They don't have our yeah. ultimates, maybe we can set up a fight. Revelation in trouble. There's you already with a flame start. He's already popped up to get some momentum to move backwards. Chico is taking quite a bit of damage, but they're not gonna push through. Your shower using to clear the waves. Kale taking a little bit of damage, but it's not gonna be enough. Moving on blast. Is he gonna flicker? Yes, he does. He gets the catch onto the initial target. I know what is gonna go down. Rejuvenate is already there. The Guardian's Bulwark has been pumped up, but it's not gonna be enough. Well, definitely not gonna be having all too much of a business here from Toes Out as they've already lost out to us. And now Sunsparks calling out a Lord, and this is gonna be the second ward of the game. And can there be any reaction at all from Toes Out? They're up before a split push. They're marching down to the top side as well as the mid lane and say, You can have the Lord all you want, but I'm gonna take down your face. But the side of Sunsparks here, they gotta re either recall or find a way to fight back. Toda now did not have enough time to get anywhere close to that tower. Regio though, getting a little bit of damage being chunked out, and that will be the Akai taking off the Granger, and now losing Chiku is definitely a big blow to Toda. Yeah, I, I think dying now might have been a big mistake here, because now Chiku, one of the core members, has a 40 second plus death timer, and Lord, by the time he comes back to life, Lord is already knocking on that inhibitor. Look at the grab, what does it tell you? The members of Sword Sparks are turning things around by breaking the silence, taking down Lord, taking down one member off the side of Toda. But that's sort of pick off here. They managed to set things up so perfectly. Phantom Steve has already been called out, but to no sort of opportunities for him to even react. Now, Malefic Raw on the hands of Tiku, definitely giving a little bit more burst, even hitting and towards the hands of the Granger. But side of Sunspark. They're waiting for a mistake. They're waiting for a look to come right in. Who's the kid going in? Hitting down two members of the wall. And that target down was so beautiful. Still have a blast to stack upon it as well. Double kill for JP as they match to crash right in. Now they're looking to secure game one in the hands of the Philippines. And Sunspark here are doing what they please. And they are going in for this finishing blow. And now Tona is on the back foot. And Sunspark takes game one. Oh my goodness, Fuzika is actually insane. He is actually ridiculous. That was so, so nasty. Goes right in the middle, gets the Petrify off, and immediately pulls them in with the ultimate. Oh my goodness, well played Sunspark here. Hold up, they've got to hold their ground. This might be, you know, a little bit of a sad defeat in their eyes, but this is a best of three. You might see it happen. They might try and turn this around, but Sunspark looking so, so good, playing a composition that requires so much positioning, so many conditions need to be met, but their tanks are absolutely ridiculous. And they met every single expectation, and by far, that was one of the best archives I've ever seen so far in the M1 World Championship. Let's have a look in towards the post stats, as we see, of course, Muzika getting some high KDAs, but the All-Stars here, Kill PJ with a total of 5 kills, 11 assists, and the highest damage has been dealt by JP with 39% being chunked out to the entirety, and it's so hard to even take down members of Twitter. You see how tanky they were. And yet again, then us as well as X-Ray, they were rendered undefective, and we were seeing Chico as well as Moon. They were struggling. Moon, although he was not taken down a single time at all, there was nothing much that you can do when there's no more frontliners building on towards that battle crowd. And now let's have a look into this early phase of the game where I saw a great dive coming from the side of Sunsports. Yeah, and especially in the early stages of the game, like JP was getting punished a lot of the time. A lot of the members were focusing the mid lane when they rotated, but not here. They were going in for turtle and that was the main objective. Like JP took quite a bunch of damage. He ended, he ended like the early game at 0-2, like 1-2-1 uh, if I was correct. And he really took a 
eating here. And hold on, they just kept trying to punish him, but eventually they, they adapted really quick. They switched him over with Rezio. Rezio held his ground for a long period of time, and then he got a lot of support in the top side, allowing him to kind of catch up into the game. And the moment he got his third item, he was ready to pop off. Oh, yes, and he popped up so hard, and there were so many of the, all these sort of opportunities that he took without even thinking twice, and they managed to actually secure that sort of lead. Now, look at the side of Sun's Mark here. Look at how many times they actually dove over that lead mark. And this is that sort of win condition that we also mentioned way early on. You gotta stop the lead mark before he becomes that late game monster. And this is where things start to actually turn for the side of Sun Spark. So as we see, of course, a full commitment. And this is where Toad out, of course, won this sort of team fight by having great positioning from the side of Boot. Yeah. And look at Meter Shower. Almost every single hit has connected. And of course, Grab Felicia will be the next one to fall in the shorts. Yeah. Uh, battle with Boot. Exactly. And I think, you know, looking at this game with Rock, Paper, Scissors, like the entire game was dependent on Sun Sparks being out of position. Like if Grab is even a little bit away from the team, it just gives a huge green light for Toad to be like, all right, the shield is out of the way. Let's deal as much damage as we can. And maybe by the time that, you know, Revelation tries to disengage the team with the Dawn Blast, it's a little too late. And we can see this time and time again, they caught them out. And then Sunspark is like, all right, all right, we need, to, we need to fight them on our turn. We need to make sure our formation is correct. And if we get those conditions down, we win fights. And as you can see, that Guardian's Bulwark just blocking everything. Oh, yes, indeed. And not only that, we're also seeing a little bit of that overextension coming from Toda for a couple of times, which resulted into this. They were on the lockdown here, and Puza can time and time again. Those Hurricane Dance were really the main factor of how the side of Sun Smart managed managing to actually take a couple of victories, and especially for this. This is that golden moment where the Lord came in time, and both of them are pinned over the wall, and Toda was rendered useless, and there was nothing that they could possibly do to actually defend this. They can't take down the Lord, but there was still all of these members left intact, and yeah. that's how they managed to take game one off of the side of Toda. Yeah, and I think at Sunspark, they were adapting along with the game. That really shows like, you know, a championship mentality.